So everyone, welcome to our new series, Talking Hair Loss. So we've got 12 people, 12 haircuts, and 12 incredible chats about hair loss. Honest conversations in the barber chair about hair loss, thinning, and receding, with some advice from me along the way. With new episodes coming every two weeks, this is Talking Hair Loss. This series is made possible by our sponsor, Manuel. All right, guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman Studio, and welcome back to our series, Talking Hair Loss with Manuel. Uh, today, we've got Leon in the chair. How are you doing, man? Good, man. You? Good, I'm very well. Thanks, man. Very well. So, what's the plan? What are we doing? What's so, the I'm looking to get a haircut that works well with my high hairline. Um, okay. And sort of like my big forehead. Um, I okay. used to comb it over most of my life with mm-hmm. pretty short hair. Okay. Um, but over COVID, I grew it out mm-hmm. um, just to try and, you know, cover up the forehead a little yeah, yeah. bit. Okay. Um, okay. But the issue is, I started to have some recession up at the temples. Let's have so, a little look at the recession then. Let's see what we'll do. Oh, okay. Well, so so I had recession um, starting around 18, and then I went right. on minoxidil. Oh, wow. 20, okay. And it started to grow back a bit. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but the issue was that I couldn't really like swoop it forward because um, you could tell it was thinning hair. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And okay. so I just kind of pulled it back for a long time. But that kind of defeated the whole point of the long hair um, with, with the right. hairline. Oh, okay. No worries. Yeah. So cool. I'm trying to like. You know, get your thoughts on what might work for you know still having a higher hairline, um, yeah. but still trying to you know cover it up. Okay, yeah, sure, yeah. I mean, to be honest, obviously, with you taking the the monoxide, it's, it's obviously working. I mean, I don't know how. I, I'd say you've got a higher hairline, but I wouldn't say it's a concern. Yeah. I think it's that's more of a personal thing because okay. when, when I saw you outside, I know your hair was kind of covering a little bit, but I didn't look and think, oh, he's 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 got a ridiculously high hair and yeah. we've got to look at what we're going to try and do. Yeah. I didn't even, that didn't cross my mind. Sometimes it, it you know, it does when you see somebody with a, a very uh, high recession, you always do think, oh, what, what's the plan here? What are we going to try and do here? Mm-hmm. With yours, I don't know whether yours is, it's high, but I don't think it's anything that I would be concerned about personally. I wouldn't, I wouldn't frame a haircut just around the fringe, sure. just around the front. Because it's, it's really hard, right? To try and fr- when you've got one thing you don't like about your about, about yourself, like say if, if if it is a high recession, to frame the whole haircut around because it limits everything. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think you're at the point where your hairline is that asymmetric where we have to worry about all that sort of stuff. I, personally, I think this is just down to how you feel about it. Sure. So it's it's probably more a psychological thing for you than it is than when I'm looking at the hairstyles you choose. If you get what yeah, I mean. Yeah. Um, when it comes to hairstyles, though, have you saw anything that you like the look of? Is there any? Any haircuts that you like that you you want to try out? Or? Yeah, I okay. mean, I I've been trying to sort of you know do this sort of like long flowing swooping back. Um, okay. You know, since I moved to London like two months ago, I've seen a lot more of that here. And yeah, I yeah, like yeah. That. Um, it's definitely more of a trend here, though. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. That's something that I, I kind of like. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty open to anything, so whatever okay. you think might work best. I mean, to be honest, it, as you can see, you kind of already got that going on now. I, I I if I was you, I wouldn't change it because it does cover up the recession. If you if you have a little look, if you if you look straight on. That's what I mean, you can't tell at all with, with, by the way you're wearing it. Mm-hmm. So I, I wouldn't want to go too against that because any, anything that I'd suggest, when you try to cover hairlines up, you always try and go for something that falls or sweeps onto the face, whether it's a fringe, whether it's a, a part of some sort or something like that. Or you go for like very short, like kind of cropped haircuts or, you know, th- things that are going to kind of like basically lie down a little bit onto the forehead. But I think with your hair type, perfect for this look because you've got that flow, you've already got that soft kind of like, lighter colored hair, which kind of does show off a lot more texture in it mm-hmm. when you, you are going for like a sweep or, a, or what we class as like flow. What I would probably suggest is, would, would, would you want to keep quite a bit of hair in on, on your head today or would you like to take a bit of, take it down? I like to take bit? it down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I'd, what I'd probably suggest you doing is, I'd probably take it a lot shorter on the ears and the back, okay. I would say, because then that way you'll get that more flow and that more kind of center part look. Because yeah. at the minute it doesn't really look, as you can see, it's kind of a similar length all over. Yeah. So if I was you, I'd probably take it back a lot, but I wouldn't take it off the ears and clean and things. I'd still keep it quite natural looking. Um, so I would probably just cut this in um, to a bit more shape for you, if okay. I'm honest. I, th- I think it looks good on you, to be honest. Uh-huh. And, and it, it, does what, it does the job that it needs to do, okay, if cool. you get what I mean. Because um, anything we do, if we bring it over this way, it's going to expose you. Right. Bring it over this way, it's going to expose you. Right. You're, you're already wearing it like this, so you, it's, it's something that you want to try out because of, the, of as you see, it's a trend here. I'd probably just cut it in better for you, if okay. that makes sense. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Cut an actual shape in for you, yeah, um, right. more than just kind of keeping it long and growing it out. Does that sound all right? Yeah, perfect. Cool, man. Sweet. Um, have you got any preference of how short you wouldn't mind going? Because I'll show you what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking something like this kind of length. Um, just, to, just to give you an example. Um, so I was thinking, if you were to take it down to something like that length at the back and sides there, not that haircut, but 
something similar to that. Yeah. It's still kind of on the ears, still a bit, maybe a little bit longer on the neckline. I'd yeah, probably suggest like something like that, that you know. Um, I'm just showing you him for, for reference of length more than anything else. Um, I'm not going to make it so unbalanced like that, but that kind of back and sides where you can see a notable difference of the top being longer and then you can see that flow sitting through. Yeah. Would you yeah, be okay with that? Perfect, yeah? yeah. All right, cool, man. So well, um, let's get the shampooed and conditioned, mate, and we'll go from there. Thank you. All right. So before we get into it, we just want to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of this series, Manual. Our first video with Manual worked out so well and the partnership was amazing, so we wanted to bring more videos to you. So if you don't know, Manual is a British company dedicated to becoming the destination for men's health. Manual offer tailored and medically approved treatments for a variety of issues specific to men's health. And obviously it's the hair loss treatments we're talking about today. Best thing about it, it's all online. You visit the website, you answer a questionnaire about your medical history and receive a treatment recommendation. Your information goes to a specialist doctor on the platform and from there you're consulted on a specific treatment plan for your case. You receive the products at home on a recurring basis and with a medical follow-up throughout. Manual were kind enough to send us some of their products and we've had their hair loss treatments out on the shelf at our Regal Jumping Studio ever since. So let's go over here and see what they've got. So guys, this is the Power Shampoo. This is a, an everyday shampoo, revitalizes your hair, it's got a, a sense of stimulation in there as well, so you can really feel it coming, going to work on the hair and the scalp as well. We've got the 5% minoxidil as well. We've also got the finasteride tablets as well. And the hair vitamins, which I am currently using as well. And they are fantastic. And Manual have also been kind enough to offer you a discount to celebrate this series on the channel. The code's on the screen now, but it's also in the description if you miss it. And the link to follow is also in the description below. So click that to find out more about Manual and their hair loss treatments. And a massive thank you again to Manual for bringing this series to the channel. So carry on watching this because you get some great advice and you'll also see some really good finished looks for anyone with any sort of hair loss problems. But thanks again, Manuel. If you're used to using or used to um, shampooing, it, like say like you know, twice a week or whatever, mm -hmm. um, the shampoo that you use will obviously stimulate the, the the blood supply, right? If you've got if you get more like specifically for hair loss, yeah. Um, we've partnered up with Manuel, and that's why we brought the series to kind of life and. Um, mm -hmm. They sent us all their products. We've obviously we've we've known of them. And we've we've kind of you know, I've, I've got hundreds of clients now who use them. You know, whether yeah, it's yeah. for vitamins or shampoo or whatever like that, right? Um, and the the power shampoo, which you use alongside minoxidil, finasteride, hair vitamins, anything else, you use that as part of like the kind of the hair loss package, really. Okay. Um, now you uh, this is a you can use this every single day, right? Uh, if you want to, um, if you are obviously shampooing it twice a week. Maybe incorporate it into that that time, you know. So when you're, you know, the the shampoo, or you know, if it, even if it was the one that you you already like to use, the one that you've, you've been using before, mm -hmm. um, it, try and incorporate that into the, one of the washes, you know, throughout the week. So um, because it, any anything that you do to give your your hair stimulation is good, right? So because I know a lot of guys now don't like to use shampoo hair every day, I, I, and, and again, I recommend not doing it every single day. Um, but if you were to do it, say like if you do it Monday or Wednesday, or if you do it Monday or Thursday, whatever, whatever days your routine are, um, what I'd always suggest is just using something like the power shampoo or anything you, you've got yourself like equivalent um, as one of those shampoos that in that week, because mm -hmm. it would just really help with the stimulation to the follicle. Day. So it can only do good. It can only work with it with the uh, medication. Do you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. So I always try and just throw one of them in there but once a week just to keep everything kind of ticking over a little bit really stay, like on the stimulation wise, you know. Do you use conditioner after every shampoo as well? Uh, not often, actually. Not often, yeah. okay. How come? Um, I kind of used to overdo it. Um, and again, I, it kind of gave my hair a weird texture. Um, so I just tried stopping it and it looked fine. So I just oh, okay. Okay. It. okay. Would you recommend conditioning? Always. Okay. Yeah. 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 The, if you if you think about today's modern skincare routine, you wash your face, you moisturize after. Right. Think of shampoo and conditioner as a, as shampoo the face wash, conditioner the moisturizer. So that's what I'd always do. So it always because I, I think sometimes when, I think you sound like it, when you said that you went over with it, and now you've just gone the other way round. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like you've literally gone from one one extreme to the other in a sense. Yeah, yeah. You know. I start off by taking this into a horseshoe section. So recession just just at the recession because again we, you know we need to work with the hairline. Like regardless what somebody's hairline's like, you're better working with it and then just adapting as you go along. So I'm working with Leon's um, recession point here, um, but we will, you know, we'll be taking some length of the back and sides. I don't want to go as like as short as Johnny Depp's picture, 
because that will create a very top heavy finish but that kind of style where the top is a bit heavier the back and sides are a bit tighter again probably very classic 90s very classic you know dicaprio kind of idea because that's that's basically what what is on trend right now that's what you're seeing around around london is is that kind of 90s kind mm -hmm. of vibe you know so that should hopefully help you with cover all bases for you really mate if i'm honest it's on trend which is great yeah perfect. It, it will work for you because you're used to it and also it's doing what we need to do in terms of the hairline so you you picked a good hairstyle i don't think i picked it for you i think you'd already <laughs> picked it i think i just kind of agreed you know what i mean i think i was just maybe maybe that's the, maybe you just needed a voice to agree i don't yeah, know maybe yeah. um but yeah it works yeah, i think you picked a good one and it'll work well so tell me about your sort of journey with Minoxidil then. How did um, how did that all come about? Yeah, I mean, for the longest time, I thought I just um, like I didn't know that was an option. Okay. Um, and I just started doing some research when I was like nineteen or so. Okay. Um, and when I got to school, um, you know, I just um, started actually looking into it. Um, and it turns out it's pretty easy to get, at least in the U.S. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I just started doing oral minoxidil. Um, you know, just like a tablet every day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I bumped up my dosage after about half a year because I wasn't okay. really seeing results, and then it started to. I started to notice it. And she started to notice it. Oh, cool. And so what was your hairline like before it is now? Like, what, if, what it's like now? Um, just a lot higher at the temples. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And is it a noticeable difference, would you say? It's becoming noticeable, yeah. And is it? In like the last two months, I've started to notice an actual difference. Oh, really? Um, have, you, uh, have, you felt, have you felt all right on them? Have you noticed any side effects or anything like that at all? Or? Oh, nothing at all. No, no. Perfect. Amazing. Oh, that's awesome then, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I've worked obviously in this industry for a while now, and um, I've come across so many clients who have used it, you know, over the years. I mean, I just remember this one guy. I think I've already mentioned it on the on the series, but um, he was a. I I I had only like, met this guy as he had hair, you know. I'd never mm -hmm. met him before that, and um, he basically, I I didn't believe him at first when he was telling me because I thought it was some sort of miracle cure, you know. <laughs> um, but basically, what he done was he had. He had the, the classic sort of uh, male hair loss island, yeah. you know, which is just like a little island in the middle here and the rest of it's kind of gone. And, you know, he's got, you know, the back and sides are still nice and thick. Yeah, yeah. And he came in and he had like, you know, f I'm saying a full head of hair, like an actual full head of hair. Mm -hmm. All right, there was still high recession, but it but it was still a full head of hair. Yeah. And he'd been taking Finestragon Noxtal for, I think, about two years. And, I, and he's like, yeah, I never had hair before this. I was like, what? And this is, don't forget, this is probably like 20 years ago. This is probably about maybe, no, not about 20, about 18 years ago, right? Yeah. And, uh, and he was like, he was like, yeah, yeah I never had, had a head of hair before this. And it, I wouldn't have believed him unless he had his work entry card <laughs> to get into the bank. And he showed me and he literally had the island, just a yeah. little bit of hair at the top. Oh, that's incredible. And I was like, bloody hell. But it was, but I, you know, that, this was before like transplants and stuff, you know, it was like really, I don't even think I'd heard of a hair transplant at this point. So from that day, I was sort of, I used to talk to clients about it and be like, look, I've got, I've got this one client, you know, he's, he's basically grown his hair back. It's it's insane. And and I think because, again, the, the, the time, it was like 2008, 2009 or whatever, it was a very unbelievable thing to hear. So it's very hard to 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 make someone believe you if there's like no real evidence out there, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I know there was, I know there obviously was, but, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Thinking back then, how, how how far on were we on Google? There, would you Google everything now, then back then or not? You know, you know, obviously, eighteen years later, when you get an opportunity to work with with one of the the best known companies to do it, and who, who supply it, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a no brainer to work with because you know it works. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So, how old are you now, Leon? If you don't mind me asking. Twenty one. Twenty one. Okay, okay. And does hair loss run in your family at all? Yeah, it does. Does um, it? So yeah, I knew it was coming. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And who? Wh which side is it? Is it your? It's your the mom's mom side. Is it, yeah? Okay. Yeah, my dad said it was like a full thick head of hair. Is it, yeah? Yeah. Uh, okay. And you sort of, um, you didn't mind jumping on and, and basically preventing it before before it started then, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Nice. Is I'm angling it from higher to shorter, so I'm bringing my knuckles closer to the head, the lower down again. And that creates that kind of shorter taper down the bottom as well. Now again, remember guys, taper isn't just a, a style, taper is a taper is a, a word and a and a, and a, a technique and, and a you know it stands for getting rid of unwanted unnecessary length, right? Same on trousers, if you get a tapered leg on a trouser, um, you get rid of un, unwanted length down the bottom, you know, whatever. What I'm doing now is I'm just tapering the bottom, but using palm to palm sections to do it. So I know everyone when we talk about tapers now, everyone the common understanding of a taper is like you know, sort of 
skin here and skin here and working out. But in terms of the actual word, it's not actually always that style. So it doesn't always have to be that. Um, so I'm, I'm going to create a very natural taper in the arms here today, just by going from longer to shorter. So it's essentially a graduation from longer to shorter. So you can see the angle on my fingers. Only a slight change as we get to the bottom. Now you could do this um, scissor over comb if you wanted to, um, to create that same kind of or similar shape. But the reason I'm doing palm to palm is because I want that flow in there. By, by working this way, it allows the hair to stay longer and, and go shorter in certain areas. That I find that really works well on a flow because it shows off all that individual sort of section that you've done as well. When you're doing scissor over comb, it's a lot more cleaner, a lot more smoother, which I don't really want. I want it to be kind of want movement in there. I'm not looking for I'm looking for perfection to an extent, but not perfection that it doesn't move around. So this is why I'm opting for more palm to palm um, than I'm doing scissor over comb for this one. Now I'm going to work around the edges now. This is over comb for this. I just tidy up the edges a bit more and then I will use the trimmers as well. But... Well, I'll keep that kind of natural finish in there towards the neckline as well. Okay, if, we're keeping it, if we're keeping it classic, we might as well go for what was the look back then as well, where it was kind of very, kind of, um, natural around the ears and the, the neckline. So I want to kind of still go for that as well. I will put a bit of a twist on it where I will take the side bends a bit neater though. Because I think that we've got to, we do have to modernize it up a little bit. Out of the neck there, so it falls a bit more natural. And I'm just going to continue with some scissor over comb just to add that little slight taper in there as well. We're just working down from the occipital bone, just taking that little bit of length off if we need it. I'm sure on the way just with this a little bit now as well, just to give it a bit more movement. You can see the direction of the way is coming backwards because that's what we're looking to try and create. It's that flow coming backwards. Go straight on now because we're past the sides. Make sure by alternating the direction of the razor. Always start, especially on the sides, if you're going to use the razor, always, always use it in the direction it wants to go or you want to force it into first. And the section after, then switch up. So when you know, notice you starting to sort of, um, well, your hairline was starting to get a bit higher. How did, how did it make you feel? Yeah, not great at first. Um, no. I mean, I had known it was going to happen at some point. Yeah. Um, it just kind of, uh, it first started around like 16, 17 or so okay. when okay. I noticed it. Um, and, you know, at the time, like you can't get like medication when you're that young. No, in no. US. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't great. Uh, no. And then you got to, what was it? You got to 18, did you? Did you use that when you started to? Hey, did you change your hairstyle around at that point as well? You know, did like you know what did you do with your hair at that point? Um, yeah, so around nineteen, um, around like COVID. Yeah, um, yeah, I just screwed out um, for that reason, just so I could try the longer hairstyle, see if it would cover it up a yeah. little better. 
So COVID kind of worked well for you then, I guess. That yeah, happen, in that one sense. In that, in that <laughs> sense, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know, I know we always talk about that, but it was, it was a pretty awful time, wasn't it? But yeah. like, I think in terms of what you kind of needed out of like your hair, for example, at that, at that point, yeah, it yeah. couldn't have come at a better time, I guess, with it, you know what I mean? Especially the restrictions of being locked down and things like that, you know? So what was your haircut like before you grew out? Just a standard comb over, really basic haircut. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, so here's the back inside side done. So I'm going to work on the top now. Just spin this around slightly. And I'm going to find a connection point in this, but we're still going to keep some length. So we don't need to leave loads of length at the front of this haircut. It's going to cover it no matter what we do. So we don't need to leave loads of length. All right. All we do, you'll notice on these, when you're working on horizontal sections um, into the top, what you'll notice, guys, is that depending on where you connect it is how short the top becomes. So if you watch this now, I'm going to connect this down the bottom here, right? At that section down there, right by the ear, right? Now this is going to maintain all length. Like so. So look what you've got. Got a connection point, but it also looks disconnected as well. So you keep a lot of length sitting through there. So that's what creates that kind of top heavy 90s kind of vibe. So you can still have connections. It doesn't always have to be a disconnect for this. It just depends on how, on how high or how low you connect the hair. Because there's my connection. We don't need all that length because it just doesn't do anything right now, what we need it for. As you can see, we're still taking a fair amount of length at the top, but it's going to fall over nicely. With that kind of floppiness we were talking about before, that's kind of what we've got. That's what we want to create more of. And the difference here would be if I was doing a joint depth hairstyle, even though I used them as an idea, I just used the back and sides as a kind of example of just shape. Um, but I was doing joint depth haircut here, I'd leave the fringe, I'd cut the fringe down on this angle. So if you were to, you could still incorporate a, a kind of joint depth 90s vibe within the same technique of what we're doing here for, for Leon. we just, instead of keeping the fringe straight across, we just drop the fringe down, so we just angle it down. The fringe is like the longest point on his hair. So we used our recession point as the horseshoe guide. So this is that one section, finger width above the guide, okay? We do the same thing, bring this down, the guide just above the ear. So as we're working through the thicker areas, you need a little bit of tension to grip the hair. But as you get to the finer areas, like the, like the fringe, just don't pull down too hard. Don't have the same type of tension because that's starting to dry out now a bit more here than it is here. If I pull that too much, it'll bounce too, but through too far back. So just remember, just keep the tension at the, the areas of where it's starting to sort of where you're trying to cover. Just try and keep that tension quite light. Okay, so still have enough to grip the hair between your fingers, but just not pulling it too hard like you would do in the other areas. Take right through the middle on that point. Just take some length off there. So we're going to just connect them through the back. So we want to keep a lot of length through here. Um, if you want to drop through the back, you need that kind of flow coming through. So you see I'm connecting that quite low. Like so, so we're maintaining some nice bit of length at the crown. Now what I'm doing, I'm going to dry this off and then I'm going to add a bit more texture if I need to and then I'm going to work on the fringe depending if we need to as well. So I'm going to put in a little bit of, put some salt spray for this. Just make sure you work it in. And we're going to all into the hair like that. I'm going to do a really quick blast with the hair dryer. Okay. Minimal heat. You want to stay away from heat. If you got any, if you feel like you've got any recession or anything like that, try and stay away from as much heat as possible. Okay. Like I'm going to use it now. I need to purely for video purposes to show the end result. Mm -hmm. But if it was you at home, I'd probably let it dry that key if I was you. Hopefully you'll see at the end as well, you agree.
then she feeds it the drying process. The rush is she dry it all the way up into one side, like that. And then come back. This side now. No idea. I'm going to finish off with just a little bit of point cutting and a little bit of texture added in there as well. I start with the fringe first, so I just take it straight across the recession, like that. And what the salt spray has done is added like a thickness to it. So you can see you're getting that little bit of drag on the comb. It's getting a little bit of thickness there for you as well. And you just take the little dry ends off at the bottom. There's an awful lot to come off anyway. is I've cut in some texture on the sides as well. So we've got that, that very low connection. I'm going to pull it out like so and there's where it would be a disconnect if it was higher up. I'm going to put it straight into that so you get a lot more drop, a lot more flow in there as well. This is all just a fine tuning before I put the shape in. This is just fine tuning. And what I'll do, comb it back and then just cut in to the sides like this and into the back. Come from underneath and still going to thin out the back as well. So we're creating a lot more movement in there at the same time. Put it right into this as well. That's just a lot, a lot flatter. There as well. Finish off with some cold air just to blast all this hair out. Right. Now, how's the length for you, buddy? You I like that length. Yeah, you're liking the length, yeah. So try to maintain quite a bit of length through the top so it falls into a nice better shape, covers the, the hairline, as yep. you can see. Yeah. Keeps a nice square finish on there as well, creates a nice shadow through the front. And obviously you've still got that kind of like 90s vibe going on as well. Yeah. So that's it with nothing in it, just a bit of salt spray. Yeah. So you could leave it like that if you want to as well, you know what I mean? You can finish with a bit of hairspray if you want to. I, I would suggest at the moment, just for the, the purpose of you trying something new, I would just try a little bit of styling bubble in there, if that's all okay. right with you. Yeah. So just a little bit of paste, if that's all right, yeah? Sure. Cool. Well, a little bit of, so this is a matte paste, okay? Don't need a lot, because we're only going for, we're only going for kind of styling, so we shouldn't use about that much for now. But a little bit of on the back of my hand in case I need it, okay? but a lot of the time I'm just going to use about a pea size amount, okay? It's dry paste. What do you do? I'm going to work it through the sides first, like this. And all this is going to do is bring out the flow that we talk about, the texture in there, okay? So we've already got salt spray in, okay? We don't need anything else in there right now. Not loads anyway. Now at the top, I have a little, tiny bit off the back of my hand. Work it through. I'm just going to work this into here like this. I'm just wanting to add a little bit of something else just to bring out a bit more texture in there, that's it. Now, if you wouldn't mind just shaking your head left and right for me, if you don't mind. That's great, there we go. Amazing. And then just shape it into style. And leave the front hanging over a bit. And then just use your fingers just to push up a little bit back as well. So we're going for that kind of natural finish. Right. And just sort of kind of fall down a touch and just pull a little bit back like that. 
if I have a nice shape of the back, I'll show you now as well. So you've got a nice shape of the back. You've got all the flowing oh, movements in there. Yeah. It sits very natural at the bottom, which you kind of should do at this, at this style, kind of style. And then you get all that kind of shape in the middle. But if you look at the hairline from the side as well, it's completely covered. But it doesn't yeah. look like we're trying to vibe. It just looks like we're going for a 90s vibe. Do you know what I mean? So it just sits over nicely. And just looks like we're going for that kind of longer, top-heavy, centre part look, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think, I think you came in with the right idea anyway. I think I could just kind of bring it to life a bit more for you. I think that's, that's all it was really, you know? Yeah, so, that looks awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, man. Thank you very much, buddy. Congratulations. And uh, yeah, thanks for sharing about your story as well with, um, obviously, for your recession point and whatever else in your high hairline. It's good that, it's good that the products are working for you as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy for you, mate, because it's, you can see the hairline's really coming through as well, so. Yeah, yeah I hope more people you, learn about that stuff. So. That's it, uh, 100%, mate, 100%. Thanks again, Leo. Yeah, of course.